Hello everyone and welcome back to Looking Forward, our exploration into futuristic technologies in Kerbal Space Program. Here we are with the antimatter powered X-Wing and we are going to approach our antimatter production facility, Space Station Liberty, in orbit around Earth. And so I've already got plotted our, our rendezvous to it and that will bring us to 1.1 kilometers, assuming I do this reasonably accurately. Still gotta use RCS fuel, MMH N204, good old fashioned fuel that is currently available, but we've got a lot of technology on this spacecraft that, oh, uh, Smart ESS is spoiling me here. Um, got a lot of technology on this spacecraft that is not really available, and among that are the antimatter reactors and of course the warp drive. We've got a full tank of exotic matter if we chose to use that, but to do a small burn to rendezvous with the station, 63.2 meters per second, I believe the antimatter reactors are more than enough for that. Um, we could probably use something even less powerful. Okay, so just turning towards it. We don't. The one thing we don't have much of is the, is the maneuvering fuel, the RCS fuel. And so I have to be a little bit... Uh, a little bit careful about wasting that. We do have some minor waste heat generation, but not much. Not while the reactors aren't really, uh, while the antimatter isn't really churning. Seems to be a pretty, pretty cool system. The, the antimatter, and by cool I mean not generating much waste heat. So, that's unexpected. In the VAB, the the VAB thermal helper uh, suggested that I would need much more. Uh, radiative capacity than even this is currently carrying but it seems to be all right so I don't really know now we we only took about uh, 475 units of antimatter milligrams it actually is of antimatter in order to get to orbit so we really don't need to fill up with more antimatter what we really need from the station is water water is the real limiting factor here we can only carry so much water at a time because of sheer volume I mean the wings are full of water and everything too so uh, we've got water tanks in the wings if I can click on a wing yeah not on the control surfaces of course but in the wing itself we've got we've got water tanks thanks to B9 procedural wings there a little bit weird seeing an X-wing going like this in the movies of course they always fly like airplanes Ah. Went up. I was looking at closest approach distance. Might not be the most accurate thing, but anyway, we can adjust using the RCS, I think. RCS doesn't have that much juice, though. You can see it's having trouble adjusting that very much. And that's the thing, in sci-fi, you've got to have limits still. You can't have every, every vehicle be all-powerful, able to go everywhere it wants all the time. Otherwise, uh, Otherwise, you can't create the drama. The drama is in limitations. Uh, the inability to act is a key part of the drama. And you could create different sorts of situations to create that inability to act, but one of them is just uh, limiting, limiting the capabilities of the technology. And actually, that's a huge part of sci-fi. Really, looking at it like this, uh, when it when it's in its sort of black and red mode the because of the lighting the x-wing looks very menacing looks like a bad x-wing looks like an evil x-wing maybe maybe an x-wing turned to the dark side doesn't it this definitely looks like an x-wing turned to the dark side somehow this thing's got great acceleration but maneuvering sucks need to improve on that could have done without some of the radiator capacity actually Looks like the VAB thermal helper was overly cautious on my behalf. Ah, uh, the ability to light your engines as much as you want. This is not officially realism overhaul, by the way. It is Earth, it's real fuels, it's deadly reentry, it's fair mirror space, but KSP Interstellar is not realism overhaul compatible. And so. We are not playing as realism overhaul here, and that's probably for the best. Okay, we're getting close to Space Station Liberty, and you can already see 
it also has sort of a red glow to it and that means its radiator panels are active and of course that is because it's got many many reactors well actually it's got two really big reactors on board in order to help facilitate the research facility producing the antimatter we have our little thorium reactor here I I forget I think the reactors on Space Station Liberty are configured to thorium rather than uranium fluoride but uh, we'll have to check that out now this doesn't have a docking port so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to have a Kerbal from Space Station Liberty fly out uh, grab a grab a pipe endpoint from here. Where are my pipe endpoints? We've got one there and one on the opposite side. So just grab one. Uh, Space Station Liberty is not equipped with its own pipe endpoints. The spacecraft flying to it will have to provide it with one if they want to fill up like that. And so that's the plan. Oh, I should explain the lead ballast. Uh, that is, of course, for balance purposes. Oh no, that's not just for balance purposes. Yeah, I, I forgot to mention in the Sabre as well, there was there is balance purposes, but actually it's uh, to shield the cockpit from the thorium reactor. So actually, uh, we've got a tank of fuel, uh, a tank of water, but also we've got, uh, we've got a lead wall to protect the cockpit uh, from the reactor. Because we care about our Kerbals, right? I can't quite select the tank with the lead in it right now, but... Yep, that's the purpose of the lead ballast. A little bit for balance, mostly to protect the Kerbal. I don't think I really needed to put lead in just for balance. I could have figured out another way to do it. Like more uh, more RCS fuel. I could have just put more RCS fuel there. Alright, we are on approach to Space Station Liberty within 250 meters now. You can see the red glowing uh, radiator panels. You can also see the rest of the body is actually lit in blue lights, uh, sort of soft blue lights. Um, perpendicular to the radiator panels are the solar panels, and uh, they are currently facing the sun there. Uh, a little bit hard to see from this angle since we're on the shadow side. Okay, we're really getting close now. Unfortunately, it's completely in the dark, so you can't quite see it properly. Don't worry, I'll make sure that we get a good daylight look at it. I've got... Uh, physical time warp on a little bit but that's about as much as things can take with unfortunately it's not quite as as kind on the on the processing as I would have hoped it's actually an interesting look because uh, when you look at the station like this there seems to be a void right at the hub here where in fact that, that there are of course structures there and that's actually where the lights are all placed the lights are shining on these objects there are three lights. There's one shining here, one shining here, one shining on the reactor side. But of course there's no light shining on the hub itself. The hub does have docking ports for craft, even though we don't have a docking port here on the X-Wing. Uh, incidentally, looking at the station like this, it's worth pointing out that the center of mass of the station is right at the hub, uh, deliberately. I made sure it was balanced so that the the, the center of it, right here at the hub, is, is the center of mass of the station. Of course, that'll have to be filled around a bit if we uh, take water out of it, but... Yep, that is the way it is. Uh, all of the trusses contain water, because that is obviously our most important resource, and the thing that we need to refuel the most, except for antimatter. And perhaps MMH and N204, which the station also has a lot of. Actually, while we're approaching, we could uh, hop on over to the station and see what's going on there. Here we go. So, uh, the station currently has 147 units of antimatter after 2 days and 14 hours of operation. Not bad. And uh, here, Bob, Lemcott, Hanuki, uh, um, Munbro, Gusted, Podney, Rodden. Adster, Gilgan, Willis, and those are just the ones in the research labs. There are also uh, the guy who we'll uh, bring out to do the refueling will be. Oh, I, uh, actually, we do have uh, Gilgan and Willis are the ones that will do the refuelings. They're they're in the list there. Okay, so uh, here we go. Not the best side of it, but here we have one reactor, two reactors, uh, thorium. Okay, good and uh, electric generators 
This is a, the maneuvering module. Uh, actually, that uses hydrazine. Oh, this doesn't have MMHN204. This I, I built the station using hydrazine. Oh, I've got to fix that. It's got to have a. I'm gonna have to send the MMHN204 module up. Anyway, so yeah, my mistake. I built the station using hydrazine. Uh, it's RCS does work using hydrazine, but uh, no point trying to maneuver it right now. Our uh, our X-wing is right there, <laughs> quite large actually, uh, quite prominently approaching the station. Look at that. Very very slowly though. Um, but yeah, it's approaching, and you can see the solar panels on this side. Gives you a sense of scale that the X-wing. Wow. <laughs> very very menacing yes let's hop back to the x-wing I'm a little bit worried about it here it doesn't look quite as big as it does on the station view anyway let's roll it okay so the docking module on the station is sort of poking up somewhere there it is We'll want to attach to that point with the Kerbal Attachment System. Okay, we're oriented properly and closing in. Okay, well we're we're within 25 meters, so maybe I should just slow down and park this thing. Hopefully the pipes can deal with 25 meters, right? Trying to get this to within one millimeter per second. It's a little bit tough. Oh, there we go. Excellent. One millimeter per second, folks. Or thereabouts. Okay, well. RCS off. S oh, darn. It's went higher than that. Okay, um, I think we should get a Kerbal out, out of the station in order to refuel us now. Even though it's in the dark. I'm going to quick save just in case, though. I'm horrible at the whole EVA thing. So, station. Now, Gilgan sounds too much like Gilligan, and I don't want that anywhere near what we're going to be doing here, especially in the dark. Okay, well, it's EVA time. Okay, get your light on. Right. This is going to be a pain. Okay, you're sort of roughly pointed in the right direction here. Uh, go forward a bit. We need you to get the pipe endpoint on the opposite side, actually. So, if you could. Okay, grab. Alright, back away. So yeah, these trusses are all full of water here. You can see the little water tanks there. Just gotta attach it. Maybe we'll attach it on this side. So that the line doesn't cross the light. Completely aesthetic, of course. Okay. And we need to be able to link. Alright. Uh, back away actually face that and go forward delicate operations here feeling being a gas station attendant like this okay link all right so we should be all linked up let's head Back to the station. Radiation dose is not too bad. Air pressure too low. Yeah, okay. We'll definitely want to get you back inside then. Okay, board. All right. And so we should be all linked up with the the X wing. Let me just uh, select one of the wings. Yes. And so we begin refueling. Okay, so I will, uh, I'll see you in daylight. Okay, here we go, sunrise. 
We're not really oriented properly right now, but eventually sunlight will hit the solar panels. Uh, let's very carefully reduce time warping. Things can go wrong, glitches may occur. I mean, it's not like this. So this solar panel is a really emergency use only. It's only if the reactors are down for maintenance or something like that that the solar panels are really necessary to power the station. And uh, well, we've got some waste heat build up here. That shouldn't be. That should not be happening. The station itself definitely has the the wherewithal to dissipate its waste heat. Hmm. I don't like that. It's definitely creeping up there. Got a lot of capacity at least. But uh, yeah, anyway, I've fueled up most of the X-Wing, but not fully. I've kept these uh, engine pod tanks empty. So the wings are fueled up, the center body tank is fueled up, and so it's ready to go. But here's the station, and we'll decide what to do with the X-Wing at some other point. Uh, we'll leave it uh, with the station for now. But yeah, uh, so these trusses all have water. We've got antimatter containment on this side. You can see here we are now at... Uh, well, uh, we've got the antimatter on the on the X-wing as well, so we can't really see discreetly how much antimatter we've got on the station, but it's it's a few hundred, and so two 3.75 meter reactors, as you can see, a docking ports all over the place, just in case I want to expand the station. For expansion, of course, I will have to send the modules up properly with a launch, and yep, much radiator capacity. Alright, so this is Space Station Liberty, and uh, we can watch it go around the, the planet Earth a little bit. And so in the next episode, probably I'll be trying out a new vehicle, but later on what I want to do is the X-Wing should be transferred to other planets via its warp drive. And same with the Saber. I'm, I'm going to have to have some warp drive practice. I'm going to practice with the X-Wing and then uh, we'll have some adventures with the Sabre too. But mostly I'm going to be in this install trying out new vehicles. So next time I'll, I'll have a new design of some sort. I, I don't have it cooked up yet, but I'll think of something. And so we will see how that works out. Alright, so uh, with this view, I'll say uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.